As a nascent cactus collector coming into the hobby, I was basically clueless. I called anything that looked like a succulent with spines cacti. However, as I began to descend past the gates that divide the generalist from the aficionados, I realized that the amount of conflicting information regarding how to best grow and care for a cactus was confusing and was akin to trying to pick the best tube of toothpaste from the grocery store. It all left me feeling nervous to try anything and a little bewildered when I'd hear comments like, could be too much water or too little water. Now some people will claim that you have to use pure inorganic soil mixes while others find that soil with some organics work better for them. Some say you have to water overhead while others claim that you have to bottom water. The one thing I can say with absolute certainty is there's more than one way to skin a cat when it comes to the best approach for caring for your plants. Now what will work best for you depends on a variety of factors. What agricultural zone are you in? What's your winter like? Where are your plants kept? And how much sun are they getting? What's the humidity? All of these things play a role. And in my last episode, I sowed seeds and showed you guys the iGrowTech 10 watt LED. Now I first used this light to grow the turbany carpus pictured in the thumbnail for that video about a year and a half ago. One thing I didn't really talk about in that video was how long my seedlings stayed under the lights, how far away I keep the lights, and what my process is for hardening the seedlings off once they're ready to come out into the greenhouse. Now my plants live in sunny Southern California, agricultural zone 10A. I have a 30 foot hoop house with heavy duty UV plastic and no shade cloth. It receives direct sunlight from sunrise to sunset. At somewhere between the three to six month mark is when I generally will be bringing the seedlings out into the greenhouse. I will slowly open the bags over the course of a week or so to slowly acclimate the little seedlings to the drier, hotter environment. I am very fortunate to live in such a conducive climate that if I'm being totally honest, sometimes I take it for granted. And now, some of you watching the last video shared what light setups work best for you and helped me to put myself in the shoes of a collector who grows solely under lights in colder climates. Now, after thinking about it, I realized that they raised a lot of very valid points and that my video could have been a little misleading without proper context. So today, I'm gonna provide that, show you what the results are thus far. Now we're 10 days from when I sowed this batch. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about how I do it. And just a disclaimer, I'm a cactus nerd, just like you, just trying to figure all this stuff out. I'm human and I make mistakes. You know, we're all learning on this quest together. So the, the long and short of it is, um, the light did work. So I'm gonna show you everything that I sewed using the light. I kind of got a little crazy with it. I sewed more than I really should have and crowded the space. But as you can see behind me, I actually got some new grow lights. Those just came in yesterday, just set them up and I should have some new grow lights being delivered, a few new sets of grow lights being delivered this coming week. So I'm gonna start testing out, trying, and showing the results of all the different grow lights. There's gonna be pros and cons, advantages and disadvantages to each one. So I wanna figure out what those are. I'm gonna show you right now, real quick, I've got the light just to start off, all right? It is currently about 16 inches above the plants, but when I am not filming, I've got it at about seven and a half inches, so it's really, really close to the plants. Uh, everything is sitting on top of a VivoSun 48 inch by 20.75 inch heat mat. All of these pots that didn't have any labels are the ones that I actually sewed in the first video. And so I sewed some agave seedlings and you got both of the bags here. I didn't label them, but I did write it down elsewhere. So one of these is gonna be agave utahensis and one of these is agave oterawai or FO76 or the green tight noted depending on uh, who you are and what, you, what your opinion is. But anyway, so those germinated quite well. Right? And these have stayed under this light, like I said, the entire time. They've been on the heat mats. Uh, I did have two pots with, uh, with no germination yet, as you can see, so. If at first you don't succeed, keep on sucking till you do succeed. Yeah. So I had two that did not germinate at all yet, yet, right? So that's a big yet. This here has started to see some germination, so not, not too heavy yet, uh, but they're starting to come up. As you can see, more germination in this bag and more germination in this bag. 
And if you look at the seedlings, you'll notice that's that's how they're supposed to look at this age. They're they're supposed to be they're, they're growing exactly like they're supposed to be. Now, where that is one exception. So I did do this here. So what you have is you've got three pots and a big bag, right? So I was looking at these, and actually this is one. Uh, shout out to B Tiffany uh, for for calling me out on this. I actually I, I mistook. I thought this was the bag of, of agave seedlings. It, however, is not. So what you have is you have two different species of euphorbia. You see, you got the small pot, medium pot, and the larger pot. Well, the way I had these was they were kind of sitting more or less like this. And so the two front pots look fine. The back pot has some relatively um, etoliated seedlings in it. And that's, that's just not how they're supposed to look. Now this is uh, Euphorbia colic colica. It's a, it's a um, medusoid. And I'm not super, super familiar with all the species of the medusas. And then in this one, you have uh, Euphorbia susanae, which is a really cool little clumping, spineless uh, Euphorbia. So, I mean, I guess what I would say is that basically overall, the light works. Now, what I have to compare it to, you know, in the past, my experience with grow lights has been essentially either this LED or I did use for a while, I used a um, six lamp fluorescent bulb four foot T5. Where that differed from these lights is the LEDs produce no heat. The fluorescent bulbs do produce heat. So when you're running fluorescent bulbs and you've got heat mats, you end up with a little climate in between the lights and the mats. So they have warm air, they're receiving warmth from above, and they're receiving warmth from the mat below. I initially brought back some Ubelmanias and some Cynthias that I wanted to like dunk soak and try to fatten up while it's still cold outside by putting them on the heat mats. They're in three and a quarter inch pots, four inch pots, is too much soil without that top heat and with it just I did notice that they were taking exceptionally long to dry out so that's not a good thing or a bad thing it's just a thing the LEDs produce no heat certainly gonna be better when I get my electricity bill in terms of winter rooting or growing full-size specimen plants under a little 10 watt light like this not really. I wouldn't do it. It's not something that I would suggest doing. You, you will likely end up with etoliated plants to some degree. I like the light. I like that it comes with a stand. After looking into some of the suggestions that I got from you guys, and I looked at the Barina lights, you know, you get a four pack. So they're, all, they're 10 watt strips as well, but you get four of them for 40 bucks. And it's kind of hard to argue with that, right? So I ordered those. I have not sowed any seeds yet using them. You can see that I did put some stuff over here though. And that is really, I sowed all this stuff after the video, but I, and I just, it was getting way too crowded under there. But you can see these actually germinated quite well. This is Stenocereus eruca. And these are, some of them are even stressed, which that, that actually surprised me. I mean, they've got the pink and the, the betaline pigment showing that that's light stress. So the 10 watt light stressed them out. In here we've got, if I'm not mistaken, this is, oh yes, this is this is Turbany Carpus Jaurnegi, which is, or Jaurnegi, depending on how you say it. It's definitely one of my favorites. We got some lithops germinating in here. This is my first time growing uh, lithops and the euphorbias, so I'm kind of excited, taking on some, some new things. And then this pot is Ferrocactus cylindraceus. And that's a, a fruit that I found on a plant uh, when I was hiking in Anza Borrego. Actually, I think this pot, hold on. One of the pots is Strombo Cactus Discoformis. And man, Strombo Cactus, if you, if you have success growing Strombo Cactus all the way to like flowering size plants, dude, holler at me, because I, I struggle with getting these things past the itty bitty tiny green dot phase, basically. Yeah, but that's how the lights are working. I mean, I honestly, I gotta say like, I'm totally happy with the performance of the light. You do have to keep the light close. You, I like that it comes with a stand, um, but for 50, 60 bucks, I just don't think it's worth it. Now that I know that there are cheaper lights available that do the same thing, or you can spend more money and get better lights. So I hope this was helpful. So I figured before I, before I let you guys go, I'll show you the greenhouse a little bit. I'm not gonna do a full tour, but I want you guys to kind of see, like, there it is, right? 30 foot long. 20 some odd feet wide 
and the seedlings are right over here. So after about mm, three to six months, I'm gonna go ahead and take those seedlings out of those plastic bags and they're gonna come out into the greenhouse, just like these guys did, right? So uh, you got some Copiapoa cinerea, KK624. Um, those, are, those were sown in a completely inorganic mix and I did that with uh, Tony Marino, Prickly Punk on Instagram. What's that? How you doing over there? Good. And I, I will say, you know, I had almost no issues with rot with all of the ones that I did in pure uh, inorganic. But, you know, I don't water as much as maybe the average inorganic soil mix user does. So they tend to grow a lot slower, you know? I, uh, I, I water relatively infrequently. So, Stenocactus coptonagonis, look at that seedling, it's about to flower, first flower. So, and these are, I did a video on these, but these are all seedlings right here. This little batch that I got from Poke House. He sent them to me as a, as a little gift, which is pretty awesome. Just some more seedlings, just seedlings everywhere. Asterius Kiko, regular Asterius, Fricks, Lophophoroides. I wish I grew those. Waiting, I got one seed on that thing, one seed. You see that? Epithelantha chihuahuensis. So it's, it's very similar to um, Epithelantha micromeris, except it offsets profusely. Now that's kind of strange because when I saw Micromeris in Habitat, they were like almost all cespitose in clumps. So I, uh, who knows? Look at that, beautiful Epithelantha. And at the golden hour, you guys, who knows? This is the heavy duty plastic I was telling you about. There's no shade cloth except for that little section right there. Um, but yeah, the plants are, are here. As you can see, they're happy. Um, I've got a sensor push, greenhouse sensor that I use. It's uh, Bluetooth and they have a Wi-Fi version, but you know, that's not the one I'm using. So um, that is, is a great way for me to be able to check and see when I'm not here, I can take a look and see, you know, what was the lowest temperature, what was the relative humidity, all these type of things. This is actually kind of cool. This is a pot of uh, Astrophyta Mysterious cultivar Super Kabuto. And you'll notice this here, and this here, and this here are super kabutos. You notice, you'll notice that when you sow Asterius seed, this is just straight Asterius, this is super kabuto, so you've got two out of that pot, one out of that pot, one out of that pot. Nah, it's debatable. You know, this actually looks like it's got a little, that's probably a different batch, it looks like it's got something else in it. But if you come over here, you know, there's Asterius, but those came out of a super kabuto batch. You know? So it's one of the cool things about growing is you get, to, you get to learn the plants a lot better. And I have found, especially actually with Asterius and with Astrophytums in general, and really with all the plants in general, if I grew them from seed and they live their entire existence with me, I like don't lose a lot of them once they get to a certain size. They tend to seem to be a bit more resilient. Uh, I think there's something to be said about putting plants into a dark, cold box and flying them up to you know 30,000 feet and leaving them in there for a month and then acting like they're just gonna come out and bounce back and be normal. I, 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 I've had a lot of losses with uh, some of the imports and things like that. Speaking of Astrophytum, here's another one. Astrophytum Capricorn, this is another cultivar, it's called Buffalo, where you can't quite see it yet and I don't know, I'm assuming that it's gonna be the same kind of thing where the, the genes aren't consistent through on every single plant. So hopefully here soon, these really start to look like buffalo. Buffalo just has really thick, almost spirally kind of like horn-like spines, uh, which is why they call it buffalo. And I bought these seeds from a dude in Italy. I believe his name is like Sandro McAleaf, some, something like that. I might be saying it wrong, but bought those seeds from him and uh, did pretty good germination rates. Check these out. This is Turbany Carpus Pseudopectinatus. I sowed these 8321. This is the pot they've been sowed in, and they're all getting ready to flower here. Three years old, getting ready to bloom for me. So the seedlings are now becoming the seed stock parent plants. How cool is that? I mean, seriously, look at this. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Look at those little pectinates. Pectinate spines like little feathers. So anyway, that's that's kind of the that's the the total of it. I hope you found this video helpful. 
If you did, you know, great. Make sure that you uh, subscribe to the channel and check out some of the other videos I made. If you like this one, chances are you might like some of the other ones. And if you, uh, if you can, it would be great if you jumped over to the Patreon and become a monthly subscriber because that's the way this whole thing is funded. That's what enables me to, to do everything I'm doing and share it with you guys. So if you can, fantastic. If not, that's cool too. Just enjoy watching. Until the next time, peace.